Hi gang, welcome to the first of these army profiles on armies that I've built over the years and I thought I'd start with one of the more recent ones, my Marines Errant. In each of these I'm going to go over when and why I built the army, go through all the models I used because there are always loads of conversions, and then go through how they were painted, but first a bit on background. The Marines Errant are a successor chapter of the Ultramarines in a quartered silver and blue scheme with a shooting star as their chapter symbol, but they've actually been around since Rogue Trader when the silver was white and successor chapters didn't exist yet. And this image here is one of the reasons I wanted to do them. They've been around so long because they're one of the chapters that participate in the Bad Ab War, where Forge World later characterised them as a chapter specialising in boarding actions and in fleet engagements. I do a fair amount of trading of old models, or at least I have done over the year, I'm trying to cut down, and this has left me with piles of spare marine bits a few times, and in early 2020 I found myself with a pile of 3rd edition and earlier firstborn marine kits, some old vehicles, some third party bits, and a few heresy parts I wasn't using. So I decided I'd use them all up and try and quickly turn them into the most appropriate thing for Firstborn Marines, a bad ab army. I wanted to do one of the Loyalist chapters, I wanted something no one that I knew was already doing, and some of the spare parts look pretty appropriate for a boarding force, so Marines errant it was. Um, with this army I had a few objectives to use up as many of the Mark VII Firstborn Marine parts as I could, as well as all the similar style stuff I had lying around, to make a pretty flexible Marine army I could use wherever, but I guess with like a boarding theme. But saying that, the choices would be led by what models I had lying around and not what was best on the tabletop. That stuff changes every six months anyway. I wanted to make an army that could pack away into one KR multicase. No more, no less. And finally, to paint the entire army really fast, in one batch, all at once. All the silvers, all the blues, all the blacks on the entire army until it was done. I really wasn't aiming for display quality here, I rarely do, just something that looks good across the table. Let's start with the core of the army, two tactical squads made from standard Mark 7 marines with a few spare forge world bits or other armour marks thrown in for variety. They have 3D printed shoulder pads, uh, this was the first time I actually tried out my Elegu Mars on a project and yeah they came out really well. Both squads have rhino transports made from some very battered old road trader models but I'm always really impressed how well these simple tanks brush up with the modern paint scheme, I've painted loads of them over the years. While we're on the core troops, let's look at the paint scheme. For this army it's pretty quick and simple. I base coated the models in army painter gum metal spray and then Zenithal highlighted them up to a pale silver colour using Vallejo steel and scale 75 speed metal, but only to use up the pot, I don't think I'll be buying from them again in the future. Once these models were as pale a silver as I could possibly get, I brush painted the blue over the top with two 50-50 thinned coats of Talisar Blue Contrast. This was actually way easier than I expected, there aren't many parts of Marine where you need to draw a straight line. Getting the line straight on the tanks was a bit more difficult. I masked off half the tank and airbrushed the other half blue so I could get a vaguely flat coat, but then I had to go back over the lines when I took the masking tape off to tidy them up with both blue and silver. After that I then masked off all the infantry and did all the power weapons with some airbrush reds and yellows and then finished brush painting by just blocking in the rest of the details with gunmetal, black and gold and then applying any transfers. When all that was dry the whole army got a coat of Vallejo gloss varnish spray and after leaving that to fully cure I then made up a lamp black oil wash to shade the whole model and then tied it up and removed the oil wash from the raised areas instead of highlighting. I then attached them to their bases which are painted separately, these are the Sector Imperialis bases, and gave the whole army a couple of coats of Army Painter Anti-Shine Matte Varnish. Yeah, all of this is really quick, the intention here isn't to paint every model to the best of my ability and there are mistakes everywhere, but as an army it still looks pretty good from the other side of the table. Unfortunately this 4k lens shows up uh, kind of more than you'd ever see from that distance. Anyway, back to the models, my two tactical squads are backed up by two scout squads made from the 90s metal scout kit, which is still the best looking Space Marine scouts kit in my opinion. The sniper squad had previously been converted by someone into a sort of Mechanicum unit so I had to rebuild their sniper rifles out of plastic tubing and replace their heads with some plastic scout heads. Originally these guys bolted out the troops choices but then the current codex came out and they became elites so those uh, tactical squads might get split up a bit in the future. Finally, the core of the army gets some support in the form of a Devastator squad with plasma cannons. The sergeant has a storm bolter because it looked cool and one of the cannons was missing its cables so I had to replace them with guitar strings. These core units are then backed up by some boarding themed elite squads. First a Cataphracty Terminator squad that I'd originally slated for a Horus Heresy army but when 8th edition came out and Heresy kind of stopped being a thing for me, they ended up at the bottom of the pile. 
these are the guys from the Battle of Kalth set. So they came with a Contempt to Dreadnought, just the plastic Kalth one. And he was missing an arm, so I replaced it with a buzzsaw from an old orc killer can. All the better for cutting through spaceship bulkheads. The army gets some more first company support in the form of these company veterans with boarding shields and power swords. The base models here are actually cyborg science fiction Spartans models. I'd originally bought a load of their science fiction Romans to use in my Custodes army. An eBay store was liquidating all their cyborg stock, so I got loads of them in a sale. And while I was clearing them out, I picked up some Spartans thinking they'd be the same size. But while the Romans are Terminator sized and thus appropriate for Custodes, the Spartans turned out to only be marine sized, so they'd just been sitting in the spare parts box for years. I took them out, gave them some spare Custodes Prisidium shields and some Grey Knights Nemesis falchions as the power swords, as well as Space Marine veteran helmets and backpacks, and I think they ended up fitting pretty well. I even tried to fit in a few spare sculpted chess pieces on some of the squad sergeants and the rest of the army to tie them all together. As well as the veteran squad, I had enough of these bodies to build a company champion, this time armed with an old Terminator metal tilting shield and a Nemesis Force sword as his power sword, and two Honor Guard, armed with two old 2nd edition Power Axe heads on Anvil Industry hafts. These Honor Guard are protecting my captain, built from the old Black Reach captain with a Mark IV Heresy helmet swap. Again, I've given him a spare Grey Knight weapon to represent his Relic Blade, and he carries an ancient metal Chaos Plasma Gun. And that's because I want him to be able to represent the Badab era Marine's errant character, Anton Narvaez. That's also the reason I've painted his sword a different colour to everybody else's. The rest of the command staff consists of a librarian, it's the old Tigurius model, which for some reason I had loads of, and a tech marine, again built out of spare parts, including a Zinge Industries techno bit for his servo arm and a tank driver helmet. Providing support are two Predator Annihilators. These are the old Mark II C versions released in the late 90s, and they were really battered to start with. All these four tanks have 3D printed chapter symbols, which occasionally cover some pretty serious battle damage. I also only had enough of the original LAS cannons to do one set of sponsons, so the other tank gets some replacement heavy bolter sponsons. Finally, the army is led by Robu Gearman himself. This was also part of the reason for me choosing an Ultramarine successor. I had somehow acquired the body of Heresy Gearman in a trade, I think possibly a miscast part or something, and I just wanted to make use of it. So this conversion is based on the Heresy Gearman body and backpack, with a head from the Cyborg Roman range, and the 40k Emperor's sword that 40k Gearman carries. Because he has that instead of the short Gladius the Heresy model usually comes with, I carefully removed the scabbard from his power fist hand. I then found a random rustic cloak in my bits box and cut it to fit around the backpack. Again, although he's the centerpiece, he was just painted at the same time as the rest of the army, all apart from the sword, which I got from my friend George, who paints on commission, and had already done it way better than I could. I'll put a link to his work below. The sword is the one bit of this army I didn't paint and left just exactly as it was. The whole army, all together, comes to around 2,500 points, though to be honest, I'd be pressed to actually fit that legally in any sort of force organisation chart. Anyway, it's enough for a fair few options in the sort of game size I usually play. As I said, the intention here was to get an army up and on the table quickly, to empty out the bits boxes and make them into something useful. I think I procrastinated and spread the work out over a couple of months, but in terms of actual painting time, if I'd worked on these every evening, I could probably have done the whole thing in a week or two. It's not the best painted army ever, it's not even the best painting I could do, but I'm not someone who really enjoys brush paintings, so just having them out of the bits box and on the tabletop is good enough for me, and I think the unified colour scheme, basing, and old and interesting models means that it still looks pretty good across the table from you. It's also one Badab army down, so they can fight against my Badab era tiger claws that, to be honest, are probably in need of a refresh at this point. And I'm working on some red scorpions too with all the old Mark IV models I had. M maybe we'll actually get round to playing the campaign at some point. Anyway, thanks for watching and at some point I'll be back with another of these. There's loads of boxes of models in my loft and this feels like a good thing to do with them all. See you next time.